Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, this is going to be a video for the hometown crowd. We have some numbers out from the Washington State Association of Chiefs of Police and Sheriffs as it relates to homicide and other violent crime numbers in Washington State throughout the last few years. And candidly, the report is not good at all. Now, as we also know, we've been going through a series of legislative sessions in this state where our Second Amendment rights are being systematically stripped away from us under the guise that this is going to make our community safer and save lives. Does the data back that up? No, it does not. So let's spend a few minutes today and let's get you all educated about what the numbers really show us about Washington's gun violence problem. Okay, so this is what we are talking about today. We are talking about newly updated and released data from the Washington Association of Sheriffs and Chiefs of Police that talk about in the year 2022, Washington State set a brand new record. Congratulations, Washington. Yes, you achieved an all-time high for the most homicides in the state of Washington at 394. Now that's 394 that are actually deemed to be homicides. There are probably still some under investigation that have yet to come to findings yet. That is an all time high. Now, that's for the year 2022. Let us go back in our time machine though and let's take a look at all of the efforts that those on the left have espoused here in the state of Washington as how they were going to start saving lives. We go all the way back to Initiative 594. That was we were going to close the gun show loophole. Hmm, how'd that work out? Then, of course, we had Initiative 1639. That was going to have all sorts of new safety features. And, of course, all the new mandatory education was going to save lives also. How'd that work out? Then, of course, just last legislative session, we had Senate Bill 5078, which became Washington's standard capacity magazine ban. How'd that work out? And then, of course, this year we had House Bill 1240, which is now codified as Washington's assault weapon ban. Now, it has many politicians like the infamous Liz Berry out of Queen Anne clamoring to get higher and higher grades from groups such as Giffords that support gun control measures. Well, you see, Miss Barry, what I would suggest is, is that the grade that you're getting for effort is one thing, but like many other academic institutions, we grade here at Washington Gun Law on achievement. And right now, as far as achievement, are you making our community safer? Uh, well, you're getting a straight F on that. Now, they say that figures don't lie and liars only figure. And I'm going to show you an example of that, because what we see here, when we take a look and we just graph out the data here of what's going on in Washington State, we will see this alarming, and I do mean alarming uptick in homicides starting in roughly 2019. Now, I'll also point out that that is one year before the pandemic, but also about the same time that all of those down in Olympia started really cracking down on your otherwise inalienable rights. Now, what could cause this sudden and obvious spike in homicide? Was it perhaps the pandemic? Was it the fact that we were all just unemployed, sitting at home with nothing better to do than run around and shoot each other? Well, let me give you another statistic also released in the same study. Because you see here, when we take a look at officers per capita from 1980 to the year 2022, we see almost an identical drop in this graph as we saw in the increase of homicide numbers. As a matter of fact, when you lay the two graphs over the top of each other, hmm, who would have ever thought that if you start systematically removing police officers from the streets of Washington State, suddenly our communities get more dangerous. I never saw that coming, did any of you? And so you see what appears here is that you have a political movement which is essentially making your communities less safe on purpose and then using the fallout from that, essentially violent crime data, to then pass more and more laws designed to disarm you and to not address the issues at hand. Now, if you think again, I'm just using conjecture and I'm hyper speculating here, let's take a look at another set of data that also came out of the same study. Now, this was data that described all the different types of weapons which are used in various different violent crimes. 
Now, according to this chart, for whatever reason, it was broken down by handgun, automatic handgun, rifle, automatic rifle, automatic firearm, shotgun, automatic shotgun, other firearm, other automatic firearm, firearm unknown type, and then all the rest of the things do not fall under the firearm category. And then they gave a list of various violent crimes in which these types of weapons may have been used in the perpetuating of that crime. They included murder, negligent manslaughter, rape, sodomy, sexual assault with an object, fondling, aggravated assault, kidnapping or abduction, simple assault, violation of no contact or protection orders, and human trafficking. Now, when we take a look at the weapon, the firearm, which is most commonly used in the commission of a crime, shockingly, Washington State is no different than any other state, and that, of course, is the handgun. The handgun was actually used in 146 homicides. It was used in another three negligent homicides and at least 39 different rapes. That led to a total of 3,794 violent incidents involving the use of a handgun. Okay, but now let's talk about the big, bad, scary semi-automatic rifle, which recently got banned because we need to take weapons of war off our streets. Now, when we take a look at the data, here's what we see. When we take a look at rifle here, and we'll just assume that this is, includes all rifles, including semi-automatic rifles, how many people were killed by a rifle? The total number, seven. And the total number of violent crimes involving the use of a rifle, 279. And let's remember that of those seven homicides that were committed with the rifle, there is no evidence to suggest that any of them involved a semi-automatic rifle. But even if we assume that all of them did, and I'm not making light of seven homicides, but the number of homicides committed with that weapon as compared to the legislation that was passed by Washington State is not only unconstitutional, it's grossly disproportional. Now again, the good news when we take a look at some of the other statistics is there were zero crimes committed with an automatic firearm, that's great, and only 56 crimes committed with an automatic handgun, whatever that is, but that in all likelihood is a regular handgun which was retrofitted with a Glock switch or something like that in an illegal fashion. So the bottom line here, Washington State, is, is that our state continues to get more and more dangerous by the day. It is by design. There are people in Olympia who are pushing an agenda designed to defund your police department, make your communities less safe, see a massive increase in violent crime, and then use that data to strip away your inalienable rights. This is not my opinion. This is not my speculation. This is what the data actually shows. Listen, if you have any more questions about the bad numbers here in Washington State or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. But if you don't, that's okay. That information is right down there in the description box. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.